Hey there and welcome to The Broom Closet. My name is Seka. This is going to be a part two of how I created this seed blessing layout page for my Book of Shadows. Loki is joining us today. If you haven't seen the first video, I will put it above, but in that video I kind of highlight different ways and techniques of getting information, font, text, and images on your page. How to lay it out, different ways of transferring, so go check it out if you haven't. This video is going to be a little more of a traditional broom closet page where you will see me adding color to the front and back of the seed blessing page. And it's up to you what kind of media you want to put on here, whether it's colored pencil, marker, crayon, watercolor. I chose to use watercolor. But as a small tip, maybe do a test on a piece of similar paper just to make sure that the color absorbs the way you want it to. Using watercolor on this type of paper, since it's not watercolor paper, I had to be very sparing with the amount of water I used just because it's already saturated, it's already been saturated with a coffee stain. Uh, so the watercolor that I ended up using did give me a very mute vintage look and I really love it because I'm still able to see this font up here. But whatever you decide to do, have fun with it and we are going to get started. I hope everyone had a wonderful week and you enjoyed my first video. We're going to pick up right where we left off. I am going to be retracing all of the pencil lines I've already traced. I'm going to be using these micro pens that I love because they don't bleed. I used to use this G2 ballpoint pen, but it did smear when I went to erase the lines underneath, but really any Sharpie will do. These micron pens come in a bunch of different colors. It is kind of an investment. I believe they're upwards of $15 for a pack, $12, but they last for a really long time. They are worth it. So some of the things that I've added to this page, I have linked in the last video, but I will also put it in the description box below. I got it from a few different websites, but I've included a blessing on the front side and a little blip about what the importance is of seed and garden magic here also on the first page. Then on the reverse, I included a tarot spread from Pinterest that I found, some gardening rules that I live by, but also ones that I found online. On the front under the seed and garden title, I have the very art of planting, of beginning new life from seed is a ritual and a magical act in itself. To cultivate something in black soil, see it sprout, then bloom, is to watch a magical working unfold before your very eyes. And you can choose to create your own blessing and write it in. I've taken one from the wide, wide web. And it says, We give thanks for the immense, rich diversity of seeds, for their adaptability and responsiveness to weather and land, and all the evolutionary forces which challenge and shape life's forms. We stand in awe of the seed's ability to remember its divine instruction of plant, and bring that forth from the soil, water and sun, always true to self in authenticity. We give thanks for the hope and the teaching of seeds. Seeds would stay quiet and still, looking like stone until conditions are just right for them to break forth and grow. We give thanks to the preservers of seeds and all their diversity, to the farmers who plant and nourish Harvest and save seeds with love and reverence. We give our love to the beautiful and sacred carriers of life with the intention that they may flourish in infinite diversity and boundless beauty. I don't know about some of you, but I have just gone seed crazy. I've planted so many wildflower seeds in my yard to welcome in all of the honeybees, and the butterflies, and even encouraging some of the birds to come and share. 
This year I've planted sunflowers, peppers, tomatoes, chamomile. Eventually we'll get some zucchini and broccoli in the ground. And in all of this, this is my first time really having a full-fledged property or garden to cultivate these things in. And I cannot wait. I love seeing the little baby shoots come out that I've actually tended and given love to something and see it come to fruition. And between Imbolc and Ostara, this is a perfect time for this. On the back of my page, I've included some tips from one of the websites I have listed and some of the things they have to say about garden and seed magic is ask the spirits to aid you when choosing a garden space. Make sure you have a comfortable place to sit and be with those plants. Be there and soak up their aura and open yourself up to listening to what they have to say, hearing what they need, and what they have to offer. Welcome the birds and the bees. You don't need to plant in rows or other ways that imitate agriculture. The thought of a labyrinth or a circle garden is such an amazing idea. It doesn't even have to be your main vegetable or fruit garden. This can be where your herbs live, or this could be a sacred space for all of the bees, all the pollinators to come gather. It could also be a place just where you honor the cardinal directions. Maybe make your offerings. Another thing is giving back to the earth. Use those table scraps like we talked about before. Make a, or start a compost and give all that nutrients back to the earth. And lastly, for this section, I have Garden by the Moon. Ages ago, I did a Gardening by the Moon Book of Shadows page, and I had forgotten all about it until recently because I didn't have land to plant on. So if you're interested, I will link the video here in the corner for you to check out my Gardening by the Moon Book of Shadows page. Now the tarot spread that I found is an eight card spread. And the questions are, what area of focus or seed is the best choice for me this spring? Number two, what do I need to resolve in order to make room for this path? Number three, how can I best nurture this seed? Number four, what will I harvest? Number five, how will this affect me mentally? Six, how will this affect me monetarily? Seven, how will this affect my health? And eight, how will this affect my emotions? And lastly, the texts that I have on the right side going over this pepper plant are just some rules or tips to use while gardening. Some of them I've taken from books, some of them I have taken from the internet, and some of them are just my rules. Holly should be burned to announce the end of winter. Cinnamon can be used to rid diseased soil. Epsom salt for magnesium deficient soil. Eggshells added to soil will add calcium. Coffee grounds contain carbon nitrogen, and other compounds that feed soil organisms. They also contain compounds that suppress some disease-causing microbes. Use vinegar to kill weeds. Greet the robins, but chase away the blue jays. If it's warm enough to sit on the soil with bare legs, it's warm enough to start sowing seeds.
I want to thank you for coming back and visiting me here in the broom closet for this second installment of the seed and garden page. I hope this helps some of you to try new techniques. Again, this is your book of shadows. This is your way of magic. So do what's best and what fits for you. I am an art witch, kitchen witch, garden witch, and this is what feels right for me. And I really enjoy making these pages. And happiness is only real when shared. I love being able to communicate with all of you, especially all the people who have come over to my Instagram. I try to make sure I answer all of you. I try to follow back. So thank you so much for visiting me here in the broom closet. Have a wonderful spring season and enjoy your gardens a little more this year.